I recently uploaded a video on the six main question types in English, but I left one out because it's a type of question that requires a little bit of rewiring to produce it correctly. I'll leave a link here to the video on the six main question types for you to check out later. But for now, let's talk about indirect questions, a type of question we ask to sound more polite in English. These question types are very common and useful, especially in professional situations or when we're speaking with strangers. In some languages, we have two or more ways of addressing people to indicate formality, politeness, and distance. In Spanish, for instance, it's not the same thing to say, ¿Quieres un café? than to say, Disculpe, ¿le ofrezco un café? And these are the tú and usted ways of addressing people which immediately indicate distance, formality, and politeness. But in English, we need different strategies to create the same effect. And one of them is called using indirect questions. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new content. Okay, let's get straight into it. Indirect questions. If I say, where is the nearest cash point? then this is a direct, open question. Remember those? But to ask this question more politely, I'd probably say, excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest cash point is? So let's look at how this second, more polite version is formed. Rule number one, an indirect question always starts with a polite expression, like, do you know? Do you have any idea? Could you tell me? I was wondering, and many more. Rule number two is that there's no subject verb inversion the way there is in direct questions. Where is the nearest cash point versus where the nearest cash point is? This is statement word order, the same word order we use to create an affirmative sentence. The nearest cash point is over there. Rule number three, we do not use auxiliaries in indirect questions. For example, when does the meeting start? That is a direct question. But an indirect question would be, could you tell me when the meeting starts? Because we're not using the auxiliary does, which is third person singular, to indicate it, which is the meeting, then we need to conjugate the verb start. Could you tell me when the meeting starts? The same applies if the question is in the past. I can say, for example, do you know when they move to this building? The beginning, do you know, is not part of the question. It's part of the polite expression at the beginning. So the question is when they moved to this building, not when did they move. When did they move is the direct version. The indirect, uh, the indirect version is, do you know when they moved to this building? When they moved to this building? Here also, there's de and t, moved to. So I don't say moved to, I don't separate those two. It sounds like I'm speaking in the infinitive, moved to this building, but I am speaking in the past simple. For more about how we link words together in English, I'll leave my video on connected speech right there in a card. So I don't say, do you know when did they move? Did is the auxiliary, but I'm not going to use it in an indirect question. I say, do you know when they moved to this building? Without did. Rule number four. When we're asking a yes or no question, we need the word if, if it's an indirect question. For example, do you know if any of the delegates are vegan or vegetarian? 
Here we have our polite introduction, do you know? And then if, because we're expecting a yes or no answer. And then a statement word order. Any of the delegates are vegan or vegetarian. Do you know if any of the delegates are vegan or vegetarian? That's the indirect question. If we ask this question directly, then it would be, are any of the delegates vegan or vegetarian? So in the indirect question, there is no subject verb inversion. We use if, if we're expecting a yes or no answer. We don't use auxiliaries and we have a polite expression at the beginning. Okay, let's summarize. So the first rule for indirect questions is that we need some kind of polite introductory phrase. The second is that we are not going to make that subject verb inversion. So where is something is the question uh, directly, but where something is is the indirect question. The third rule is that we don't use auxiliaries in indirect questions. So because we're not using auxiliaries, we need to conjugate the verb because we're using the word order of a statement and we are not using auxiliaries. And the fourth rule is that for yes or no questions, we use if. I mentioned in my video about the six main types of questions that I'm collecting questions from you and when I have enough uh, interesting questions then I'll be filming a video answering all your questions. So why don't you test your understanding of this video and write an indirect question to me. So think about an aspect of English that you would like to know more about and ask me an indirect question about it. Put it in a comment below in the form of an indirect question. Try that. Okay, hope you found this helpful. Remember to pick up a copy of my free audiobook together with a transcript so you can you can get both you know one of the things i say in this audiobook is that speaking and listening go hand in hand these are um, language skills we know that language is made up of four skills we have listening speaking reading and writing reading and writing are a pair and speaking and listening are another pair so if you want to be fluent in English, if you want to be confident in English, what you need to do is you need to expose your ears to English. Why? Because it's through your ears that your speech is going to manifest. The more you listen, the, the better able you will be to speak. So pick up a copy of uh, my audiobook and you'll see that I'm making lots of uh, suggestions for you to make small changes to your study habits and you'll see how much you can improve really quickly to become a fluent and confident speaker of English. And of course, subscribe to this channel and watch another video. Until next time.